Did I get? Welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 7th of May, 2021. A uh, reminder that we abide by the Jenkins uh, Contributor Code of Conduct. So thanks very much for being here. Topics that I had on the list, open action items, securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline, Java 11 as default in all our images, proposed Docker changes, security scanning status, uh, anything else that we should add to the agenda? Alex or Gareth, anything that you have that needs to be included? Nothing for me. No, not for me. Okay, all right. So, so on the action items topic then, I've still got this one. The JEP process really is becoming easier and easier intentionally. So this is, there's no excuse. I just need to get it done. Um, we've got a proposal on the second action item Propose to include, to provide plugin installation manager docs as part of the Jenkins on Kubernetes documentation project. And um, let's see, it's RV Sudakar is working on it with the docsig. So glad to, glad to see that it's, I think, second or third, see the, see the proposed outline in the docs mailing list. Discussions are happening there. And one of the, one of the items is that, that exact topic of plugin installation manager, let's document how to use it well inside of our Docker images and thus inside Kubernetes. Uh, still parallelization and multi-arch is, is ARM64, S390, still interesting, not yet happened. And I have opened the PR for changes from the Contributor Summit. So at least one item is done on this list. Okay, next piece was securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline. So Gareth and I have worked on a Elastic Access plugin has uh, switched to use semantic version, automatic semantic versioning uh, with continuous delivery. Uh, now, Gareth, I saw a comment from Jesse Glick expressing concern about the technique. Have you got any insights on, on Jesse's, Jesse's concerns or is it something I should take up with him separately? Actually, I thought his concern was on the other versioning scheme. Oh, oh, other I, meaning. It, 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 was, it was hard to read because it's a Slack thread, but it, it's, it's difficult to read. But I, I took it as, when I put the example as 807 dot some random char, um, I think his concern was with that because that won't work with Maven versioning semantics. Ah, ah okay, all right. Yeah. So, to, so I just need to, let me take the action item to discuss with him to confirm that the, the technique we're using in Elastic Access yeah. is not going to be a problem for Maven because as far as I understood, what we did there looks exactly like semantic versioning, right? It's exactly yeah. three components and applies the semantics of, okay, patches increment the rightmost component, features increment the middle and breaking changes increment the left. Yeah, and that, that, that versioning um, tool, the JX release version is used throughout JX and most of the libraries that it creates. So it has no problems being, you know, deciding the version of a component that's used as a dependency somewhere. So that should be fine. Great, okay, super, all right, so. That for me was, was I, the, the experience is great. I, I haven't yet released off of a branch. So there's still yeah. some work to be done there on Elastic Access to be sure that it works, but it, it felt good when, when Gareth and I did it, it just seemed to work. And we've, we've also released the Tecton client plugin today with the same approach. So that switched oh. over to use um, the, we already, 
releasing with the JEP229, but we had, we were kind of munging a version together um, it, um, because we didn't want to go with the 1.00 yet. But today we, we switched to the 1.00 and now it's using the same approach as Elastic Actors. Oh, cool. Okay, so, so now we've got two reference implementations that we can use to decide this is, this is a, a test, great. Yeah. Where, where do I look for the, um, what's needed to implement that? Is that? Uh, here, let's, let me. So I, I would let, like to do that on um, token macro. <clears throat> yeah, has token macro already switched to use continuous delivery the, yes. or, the other way? Yes. I'm not sure you want to go. You, I'm I haven't sure. released anything yet. Oh, you haven't. Okay. All right. right. Well, so then, then let me put a link here. So awesome. GitHub.com. Is it the report version.yaml? Uh, no, actually, oh. I think it's workflow GitHub action. So let's, and, and yeah. maybe. Yeah, well, uh, so. I've just popped, I've just popped one in the chat. Which should, oh, that you. should be pretty much identical to what you have. Perfect. All right. So this one, this is the Tecton client one. Good. All right. So I'm just put that link here. And then the elastic axis one I can put because the same thing should work for elastic axis, right? That same path. There it is. Ha, ah, it does. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so at least uh, at least it's a, it, I think it's worth. Yeah, the report version um, pipeline, we added as a sort of um, a, a method of debugging what Jack's release version was going to determine as um, the next version. Gotcha. Okay. So because because it can be run on workflow dispatch, you can select a branch to run it against. So it's just it's just a useful debug tool. It just prints out to see what the version is. So it's quite handy. Yeah. So and and truly, this has been a, a fun experiment. So when I click deploy, let's see, was it deploy? Yeah. This will now tell me the the next version number it would use. Oops. No, I have to click it correctly, don't I? Report version, yeah. I say run workflow on master. Yeah, and, and now I get, the output will tell me what version number it would have done the increment to. Good, okay. All right, so token macro All right. Now I'm still I'm still not fully personally through the transition yet to using semantic using can what oh there it's conventional commits. Um, is is still a learning curve for me, right? I haven't yet uh, trained myself to always use a conventional commit marker text, and and that's um, just needs practice. Anything else on securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline? I mean, as something in the future that you could do, um, you could determine the next version number um, based on the release drafter config. Well, not so much the release drafter config, but the release drafter content. So if, if we say it's a major release or a breaking change, we would use that to bump the next version. So it would be a case of um, getting hold of the, do, doing the API call to get the release stuff and then analyzing the text in the same way that the interesting check does. Yeah, so looking, thing. looking basically at the contents of this next thing. Yeah, so you're... So you like if you have a new features and improvements for in, for instance, that mm -hmm. would be that's a feature. You know that's a, a minor release there. Um, if if it comes up as major changes, then we know to bump it from that. So if you 
if you don't want to use um, the conventional commits as a as a process or, or as a way of determining this stuff, that may be an easy way of doing it. Mm, right. Um, but and there it would need either extensions to JX release version or something other than JX release version to decide the version number. Is that how that would work? Yeah, something other than JX release version. But I think I mean you, you could. It wouldn't be too difficult to do because I think the difficulty would be like if you had to make a multiple GitHub calls or GitHub API calls to be able to determine that, then it's going to be difficult. Um, and you probably need to write something to be able to do that and handle that. But this, you should be able to do it. You've got, there's already the logic there in the um, in the current GitHub action to get that content and pull it back. So, and you've got the logic to interpret that there already for you. So it shouldn't be too bad to make that decision about what oh, the bump right. is. Oh, right. Because we're already, exactly as you said, we're already reading the contents of this thing inside the action. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good. So you read the, read use and use the release drafter content. It's really use the release drafter content we're already reading to decide the level to increment, right? Patch, yeah. minor or major. But, you know, that could be an alternative to conventional commits if, if that's something that people don't want to use, for instance. Right, right. Good, good insight. That is that is an alternative. Thanks. Okay. Uh, anything else on securing the delivery pipeline? Okay. Next topic then was Java eleven as default in all our images. So the conversations um, have uh, moved between drop Java eight the most aggressive, um, maintain Java 8 for a limited period, and uh, yeah, that, that I think was the two comments. Anything the two of you want to guide there in terms of um, where we should go with that? I think I'm prone to this maintain Java 8 for a limited period after that because because it's we don't have enough Java 11 adoption yet in the in in the Jenkins installed base that I can see. Yeah, I, th I think we probably have to maintain Java 8 for a period of time, just based on the feedback that was on the uh, mailing list about Java 11, and that was just for uh, that wasn't even for the Docker images necessarily. That was just in general. <clears throat> for updating the source level to 11. Um, but it seems like there's still a lot of people who use Java 8, so we can't really just drop it. Right. Okay. Although, although for Docker containers, if, to me, it seems kind of weird that um, it would matter that much. Oh, oh I see. You Your know what point I mean? is we could, we could, could drop Java 8 from Docker containers, that's not stopping the project from using Java 8, but just don't deliver any more Java 8 in the Docker containers. Yeah, because all of the platforms that we deliver Docker containers for support Java 11, and even better actually than Java 8 on like S390X and um, so forth. Right. So yeah, that's, that's my take. Good, good. Okay, thank you. So I'll I'll bring that comment to the to the discussion, and um, I think Oleg had noted time to submit a JEP, right? So let me put one, an action item for me that that I need to submit a JEP for Mark. Open a JEP for Java 11 as the default as the standard Docker image basis. Okay, good. All right, now, 
back up. Okay, so anything else on Java 11? Okay, Docker changes. So multi-arch builds, no progress. Um, Alex, you had noted ARM64 improvements. Anything you want to report there or still still sort of holding? Um, still holding right now. I, I do want to get back to this, but I just haven't had a chance yet. No problem. That's great. Yeah, and and this one, more and more people are using Plugin Install Manager. I think this one is a is a good one to do as we publish the documentation for Plugin Install Manager. That's when we merge that and declare, hey, we've changed to use this new way of doing it. Maybe the question is, should we ask um, Sudakar? to sequence documentation of plugin installation manager first so that we can use it uh, sooner. Comments? More docs is always good. Okay, yeah, so the, the, that's great, all right. Um, Non-root user on agent Docker images. I'm not sure. I think that's not yet been merged. So, or, or, or Gareth, is this one that, that the change was made? It's definitely not been merged. Is this one that the change was made in the infra images so that the infra images are not using root? So we've worked around it in infra that we're actually not executing as root anymore. Yeah, possibly. Um, so it's only on the it's only on the agent side, um, right? I think this was because this was all part of that. It's quite a large change change set that Damien was looking at, um, and I think what he wanted to do was look at a much better or more efficient way of building these images. Ah. Um, I think that was the. The idea. So he's looking at the changes to the pipeline library to support multiple different Docker builds and that kind of stuff from a single repo. And Got it. And investigating Packer to see if we can have almost like better inheritance. It's not, it's not an inheritance in the container, but at least in the logic that we use, so we don't have to duplicate it everywhere. Um, that kind of thing. Good. All right. Thank you. And announcing those changes, we're not ready to merge them. Nothing to announce yet. Security scanning. So Oleg is has made further progress with Linux Foundation security and Snyk and is, is actively starting a, a co-working thing with them to help adapt Sneak to better understand or adapt what we need in Sneak so that it will better understand Jenkins use of Maven and not incorrectly flag things as a dependency that are that are included as a dependency by the Maven HPI by our, our, our HPI process the, there's there's work going on there so very glad for the progress Oleg's making. He regularly reports on that in the governance meeting and elsewhere. Um, code QL scanning. I'm. I think this is. We're we're now in discussions of how do we deploy it more broadly, and hosting requests. So, oops. So Alex, in terms of hosting requests, I assume it's still being used there. Is that correct? Uh, the code QL. Yes. Yeah, it's not like a. It, it, yeah, it's still just a local copy. It's not a. Oh, oh, right. So this is not a systematic review. Right? Correct. This is okay. So, so as you are stepping away from hosting requests, and we're getting more people added to the hosting team, will they likely use this a local copy as well, or is there something different? That's what Daniel said. So we, it, we he and um, Oleg and I, we got on that meeting yesterday. Uh -huh. and no, no, no one else showed up. So we just kind of chatted about some things. <laughs> and uh, that was one of the things he said was he was happy to give people access that we're doing the hosting requests processing. So. Okay, good. Uh, 
Excellent. Okay. I don't know if he's going to do like a blanket everybody who you know starts doing it right away, but I think you know at some you know as people are vetted or whatever, it, it will be access will be given. Right, and and that makes sense. Very good. Any other topics we should discuss today? I don't think so. Okay. Alex, Gareth, thank you very much. I'll post the recording after probably later today or within a few days. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Thanks. Gareth.